Welcome to another DK Custom Products video. I'm Dwayne, this is Kevin, and today we're gonna to be talking to you guys about your ECM in your fuel injected Harley. What it does, why it does what it does, and how you can improve upon it. So the ECM, the electronic control module, there's a lot going on inside that little device, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So the first thing we're going to talk about is that it's divided into two sections, open loop and closed loop. <laughs> Up until 2007, Harley messed around with fuel injection. Some of their bikes were carbureted, some were fuel injected. It was 2007 and forward where all Harleys are now fuel injected. And they all have closed loop and they all have open loop. And this is typical in the fuel injected world, not just Harley. Closed loop, very simply, is where there's an O2 sensor in the exhaust that it measures what the AFR is, and it communicates back to the ECM where there's a table showing what Harley programmed the AFR air fuel ratio to be in the ECM, and that O2 sensor gives feedback to the ECM telling Oh, it's a little too rich, lean it out a little. It's a little too lean, richen it up a little. But once you give it very much throttle at all, or put very much load on the engine at all, it goes out of closed loop into open loop. And then it's not getting any feedback from the O2 sensor, and it's just going directly off the map. What you hear is the map. It's a table that shows at this RPM, at this load, at this air temperature, at this much throttle, this is how much fuel to give the engine, and this is how much timing, how much the timing should be advanced or retarded. That's open loop. In open loop, nothing to do with the feedback from the O2 sensor is affecting the engine. So that's a definition of closed loop and open loop. Right, and it's worth noting that these parameters are functioning with an EPA compliance. The EPA sets how enriching your fuel delivery can be or can't be. Right, and so most most bikes come, the twin cams, let's take an example, because most people, a, hu a huge percentage of people have twin cams, and those bikes from the factory come, and we see the AFR, the air-fuel ratio, being anywhere in closed loop being anywhere from um, 15.2 all the way up to 17.5. This bike, when I had, had a brand new stock, 17.5. Bone stock from the factory, 17.5. Horribly lean. Dangerously lean. Dangerously lean, yeah. And, and of course, it did take long for me to change that because that'll damage the engine uh, over a period of time being that lean. But they do that for to meet EPA uh, requirements. And that is in closed loop. But when this bike, when you got on the throttle, mm -hmm. went half throttle, three quarter throttle, full throttle, it dropped down to 11.9, 12.2, which is perfectly fine. But the thing is, 95% of all riding, no matter how badass a person thinks they are when they're riding, 95% of the riding is in closed loop where it has to be EPA compliant and it's just really lean. So there's a lot more going on in the ECM other than fuel delivery, right? Yeah, and, and a lot more than just open and closed loop. I'm going to read through the different things that the ECM receives from different sensors on the bike because what happens, the bike is constantly feeding information to the ECM so the ECM can make adjustments to keep that AFR and that timing where it needs to be for EPA compliance in closed loop and where it needs to be for performance in open loop. So there are actually nine different readings. We're going to go through it real quick. And by the way, this video is in no way, shape, or form an exhaustive look <laughs> at the ECM, okay? But it's an, this is an overview. And we're just hitting the important points to understand when people throw out different acronyms, you know, when you're talking to them or in videos or on the forums. 
So the first acronym is a CKP, which um, stands for the crankshaft position sensor. And this sensor monitors the crankshaft speed and position. The ECM uses the inputs from this sensor to determine what stroke the engine is in so it can deliver, deliver the fuel and spark at the desired time. So basically, you, you don't want it to be sparking when it's not time to, you know, for the combustion cycle. Um, so that's the CP, CKP. The MAP, or the MAP, and this is where it can get confusing. Everybody says, what MAP do you have in your bike? Meaning, what tune do you have in your bike? But there's another acronym for, in the whole tuning world, of MAP, M M A P, which stands for Manifold Absolute Pressure. And for those of you who have power visions and you can monitor the different things on your bike, that's one of the things I monitor on my bike. I have it always up there, always showing my MAP, my Manifold Air Pressure. Um, the ECM uses the input from this sensor to help calculate how much air is entering the engine. Okay, because it needs to know how much air is entering the engine so it knows how much fuel to put in. The third sensor is the intake air temperature sensor, the IAT. The ECM uses the inputs from this sensor to help, not to totally, to help calculate how much oxygen exists in a particular volume of air. So obviously, if you're watching this video, you know a little bit about tunes and about how the engines run and you're interested in getting more performance and you know that cold air, cold temperatures, your Harley runs stronger than in hot temperatures. And the reason for that is, is that cold air is denser than hot air and it has more oxygen than hot air. Cold air has more oxygen than hot air. So the colder your intake can be, the more important. And uh, so intake air temperature, IAT. Fourth is engine temperature. The ECM uses the input from this sensor to determine engine temperature, because that's going to have an effect on timing, pretty big effect on timing. Thro TP, throttle position. This provides the input to the ECM as it reacts to throttle shaft rotation. These signals in indicate throttle position if throttle is opening or closing and how fast it is opening and closing. So if you're really getting on it, it knows that versus if you're rolling on it, okay? VSS, Vehicle Speed Sensor, provides input signals to the ECM to indicate the speed of the motorcycle. BAS, Bank Angle Sensor, that's if your motorcycle goes more than 45 degrees to angle, tip to the side for over, uh, for over a second. It shuts off the fuel and the spark. So you see guys drop their bikes, right? And they go to pick them up, they pick them up and they go to start them and they won't start. That's because the bank angle sensor got tripped and you got to cycle the ignition off, wait a little bit to let the bank angle sensor reset. O2 sensor, this is a biggie, the O2 sensor. These are switching type sensors and they're narrow band on Harleys and they're used only in the closed loop part of the, of the tune and they provide input to the ECM based on the amount of oxygen being sent uh, in the exhaust system. So they're measuring the amount of oxygen, which lets them, the ECM then deduce how much, what the air fuel ratio is within the combustion chamber. And the last is the ISS, the ion sensing system. This is a system that on twin cams uh, um, detects detonation or pinging and retard and then sends that information to the ECM so it can retard the timing so that the bike doesn't continue pinging. So that's a pretty exhaustive list of things. So like I said previously, there's a lot of things going on with your fuel system and the ECM. So why is it important to know? To know? Well, number one, like, you know, you, you, when someone references it, if you're asking a question about a tune or a bike and someone references it, it's good to know that stuff. But the other thing is, to know that what is going on with your ECM in regards to a tune, whether you're using XIDs, VIDs, power visions, FP3s to tune your bike, all of those things are working and making adjustments to 
the tune of the bike regardless, whether it's stock tune, a flash tune from PowerVision FP3, or whether it's being supplemented by the XIDs and the VIDs. Okay, so like most systems on a Harley, they leave a lot to be desired. And if you're gonna improve performance, rather than just blindly throwing money at parts, you need to know why certain parts improve the bike in certain ways, right? Like an air cleaner, increasing airflow, an external breather, lowering the intake air temperature, things like that. Right, I mean, just, I mean, because we harp all the time on getting a free flowing air cleaner, having an external breather system, why is that important? Because the ECM is measuring the intake air temperature and the hotter it is, the worse the bike is gonna perform. So you want to get it as cool as possible. Um, so anyway, there's one other thing that is really um, not well documented in any of the Harley literature. It is there, but you have to really search for it. And there's been a lot of uh, controversy over it, a lot of talk on the different forums over it. And um, many years ago, I um, talked to quite a few people in the industry at Harley, at, at Dynajet, uh, and then looked through all the hidden stuff that Harley mm -hmm. puts in footnotes in their race tuner yeah. manual and all that, and pretty much deciphered it and, and did decipher it. So Harley calls this adaptive fuel value. It's known in the general EFI world, other motorcycles, cars, everything, as long-term fuel trim. Harley calls it adaptive fuel value. Why is this important? Because there, for every person that will tell you that a Harley ECM can learn, another person will tell you, no, the R e ECM can't learn, it can't adapt. And the fact of the matter is the ECM can adapt up to 20% more fuel. So if your bike needs more than 20% more fuel, the ECM cannot adapt beyond 20%, but it can adapt up to 20% more fuel or 20% less fuel, which doesn't happen because they come so lean from the factory already. So, um, and that uh, that ability to adapt, that adaptive fuel value, long-term fuel trim, is in every vehicle, and it's there because as engines wear, as the fuel system, fuel delivery system wears out, conditions change based on those nine different sensors that we just read out, and there has to be a change, and that's why a car uh, say a Ford pickup truck um, runs one way at 10,000 miles and then at 120,000 miles when obviously things are more worn and aren't working the same it still runs just as well because it adapts okay and it runs just as well at 10,000 foot elevation where the air is really thin as it does down at sea level or at 5,000 feet it runs just as well in warm weather cold weather because it's able to adapt. So how, why is this important? Well, because people want to add exhaust that sounds like a Harley, not, you know, this quiet EPA mandated exhaust. And they want to know, you know, can the ECM adapt to that? So we, we, we already talked about how open loop and closed loop works. And the way that the long-term fuel trim or adaptive fuel values, what Hurley calls it, works, it it reads information that occurs in closed loop, writes it into a table, and then applies that table to the open loop. And so, like a lot of people say, the XIEDs, VIEDs, only work in closed loop. No, they work in open loop too because when the XID is constantly making the closed loop richer, it's writing that richness variable to the long-term fuel trim table, which then gets applied to the open loop and it makes the open loop richer also. Mm -hmm. So that's a little primer, just a primer on um, how the ECM works, what it's comprised of, how to, how to not get lost when people are throwing out IAT, MAP, I mean, uh, I can't, years ago, 
when I only had a carbureted bike and said I would never have a fuel injected bike. I didn't know when people said MAP, I thought they were talking about the map, the tune. Mm -hmm. I didn't know jack about fuel injected. I didn't want to know about fuel injected. I wanted to keep my carbureted bikes and, and carbureted bikes sound better. And I, I just didn't want it. But so it's good to know what uh, those different acronyms mean and how they affect and how all that information is being fed in milliseconds to the ECM that's constantly making adjustments to the air fuel ratio and the timing. And I think that's a pretty good overview of how the ECM works. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'd appreciate it, it helps us out a lot. Hit that notification bell so you'll be updated when our next video comes out. Y'all ride safe out there. So we're gonna be having a video coming out soon on what, what to know when you go from two wheels to three. Yeah, it's a whole new world. <laughs> So look for that video coming soon. What's really interesting is today was your first time you've ridden yeah, a trike. I've, I've sold thousands of trike parts to thousands of people. That's the first time I've actually operated a trike and it was an experience. <laughs>